know. And you probably are seeing something along the lines of this. So let's click File, close it, and No. All right, click this new uh, this new button right here. And this is how you create a melee map. You can adjust the width and the height right here. And it'll tell you the size description. You know, if you make it a 40 by 40, it'll say tiny. So I, I, I'm i going to do 192 by 192, just so that way I have a lot of room to play around in here. And I'm going to pick... Uh, let's go with... Uh, I see too many jungle maps. Let's go with... Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, where is it at? Ulan cave. Okay, so this is uh, this is how you pick the different starting textures for the ground. So whatever you select here will be the default texture that is applied to the ground level that spawns when you load the map. So this is the base height. You can adjust that to whatever you want and add random height. This will kind of make it the map kind of bumpy or hilly or whatever you want to do. And you can mess around with this to see how how that works. But I'm going to turn that off for now and gonna go okay create the map and here we go so you can see I selected rocky so it's rocks all over the place here and I intentionally picked something that looked a little tacky in the start so I'm going to click this button right here and this is the texture button so I clicked it and you saw how this menu down here changed and this changed and all this did too so basically when this is the top level terrain menu and when you load a map, it generally defaults to having the terrain uh, terrain option highlighted. But if it doesn't, you can come up here and click the terrain button. That's right there. And also layer. And the hotkey is the letter T. That's right. This tutorial is brought to you by the letter T. And the number four. Okay, so brush texture. You can click this and it'll go brush road. Brush height. Cliff, foliage, water terrain object. We'll get into that later. For now, texture. Operation, add texture, remove, uniform, replace, smudge, blur, and fill. For now we're going to add texture. So you can see that we have different textures to choose from, and we have increment, size, and speed. Increment, I'll show you here. This is what happens when you apply a texture at a low increment level. You see it just kind of slowly goes on there and kind of spatters around a little bit. So kick the increment level way up and you'll see, bam, goes on real quick. So this is how you apply, uh, let's say if you wanted to kind of pour sand in a larger area, you would do that. And then if you wanted to have it taper off, you could set the increment level way down. And you can see that it now kind of blends into the dirt a little bit. So that's how that works. I'm going to undo that. Go away, sand. And for this, I'm actually going to use, uh, I'm going to get rid of this rocky texture with this right here. It's called fill texture. It's the very, uh, very rightmost button. So you click fill and you click sand. So I'm going to click now, left click in the map. And it's going to take a minute, another minute, another minute, and go. All right, there we go. So now it has replaced the entire rocky area with sand. So now we have our, uh, our sandy texture here, and you can you can make it whatever texture you want. I mean, that's up to you. So you've seen how the uh, the fill texture works. Now let's go back to the add texture here and we'll click a different one and you can see how this interacts again see it kind of smudges over here so you generally want to use the increment uh, as at a lower uh, setting when you want to kind of blend in the terrain and make it look more realistic like right now I'm spattering just a little bit of rocks here and you can see how it has that kind of uh, blending effect where it looks like some of the rocks are underneath the sand and uh, I really like how the textures interact with each other in that it doesn't just, you know, plop it down and make it look all choppy. They'll kind of layer on top of each other to really add a good blending effect. So, and the speed here, this will just control, you know, how fast the texture is applied. So, kind of like increment, increment, rather. And shapes, this tells you what shape the uh, the application cursor will be. 
and the style, you know, airbrush, paintbrush, noise, and fractal. And you can mess around with that, and the fall off applies to these two. Okay, so this and this are the two main textures, uh, texture buttons you'll be using most of the time. Uh, you can remove texture also with this one right here. It's pretty self-explanatory. You would click remove texture, zoom in here, and you would pick which texture you want to remove, what increment you want to remove it at, what size do you want the circle, yeah, the size. The size just controls how big the circle is. I mean, you can see that uh, size. See, it makes it really big. And then really small. So that's that. Congrats, you can paint. Whoa, too far. That's what happens when you hold down the undo button. So while I wait for this to go, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a look at the next thing I'm going to cover here. That's the roads. Oh, and, uh, and the brushes, I'm sorry. You can experiment with the replace and the smudge and the uniform. Those aren't really necessary uh, buttons, I've found. They're very helpful, but I generally don't f I don't find too much use for those. So the three important ones are, are one, two, and this last one right here. So next, uh, next kind of top level menu here is the road. The maps don't really have too much variety in the way of roads, but you can change the road width and uh, click that, make the road that big. Okay, so take your mouse cursor out here, left click, and you'll see that it adds a line and you kind of drag it out to wherever you want it to go. So left click again and there's a road. All right, and then you can tell it where to go next. Left click again, left click again. That's a road. Very simple. Undo that. Okay. The next uh, next feature is the height. This is not quite the same as the terrain raising and lowering the cliffs. This lets you change the height of an existing uh, existing cliff level. So you'll see, I'm going to bump this up really high here. Amplitude right there. Okay, so this is raise, lower, uniform, noise, and smooth. Raise does the obvious. Raises it up. Really high. And you can put this, you know, ridiculously high if you want to. The thing about this, though, is this terrain is not affected by cliff levels, like I said earlier. So this terrain is the same height as this terrain. So units can walk up this and then walk down. This is very useful for adding kind of a level of realism to the map. Um, you can add, uh, you can use a combination of this lower, um, lower paintbrush and uh, some of the textures to create kind of a crater effect. You can make it look like an artillery shell, you know, blew a chunk out of the map, whatever you want to do. Um, but uh, anyways, this is the lower ability right here, and it's pretty self-explanatory. So this is the uniform command. What this does is wherever your mouse pointer is, it will take that level's, that point's terrain level and bring all the terrain around it to the same level. So you see I'm smoothing it out because where my mouse pointer was was at a relatively low point in the map, whereas if I did it up here, it'll now drag this level of terrain and apply it everywhere. And then I can bring it back up to normal and it'll all be back the same. God, I feel like Bob Ross. Okay, take this happy little brush. And this is noise. This kind of adds a random... Whoa, that's too much. Okay. We're going to kick that way down. Adds kind of a random noise to the ground, so to speak. You can see how it, uh, how it adds varying levels of elevation. So that's, uh, that's very useful in making... Um, if you want to use water and have you know part of it above ground or part of the terrain above the water level and part of it below, this will kind of lend itself to, to fi uh, doing that. And also you can make it look again like it's kind of a natural uh, natural environment. I've noticed the, the flatter surfaces look a lot better for artificial environments like when you have um, when you have uh, metal platforms on a cliff or not a cliff but uh, on a raised you know elevation uh, with artificial 
um, cliffs and whatnot. So, whereas the natural terrain looks a lot better with the with some of this, but you don't want to you don't want to go overboard on it. You don't want to have a map that's like this because this is just this is just bloody annoying. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that, and we're gonna continue here. So, lastly, the uh, this is the flat or the smooth terrain feature. So I'm gonna raise this up and apply the smooth feature to it. What it does is it kind of brings it back down a little bit into a more uh, uh, level terrain. If I held this here, it would eventually level the whole thing out back to the ground level by smoothing it around. And uh, I'm sorry if you hear that noise in the background right now. The garbage truck is driving down their road. Definitely going to file a complaint with them for interrupting my video. I will do it on your behalf. Do not worry. Hopefully they'll be gone soon. So that is the uh, that is the um, 